ReleaseWire helps businesses connect with interested journalists and bloggers. Check out the link in the description to save 25% on your first press release. Admiral, radar shows that we have liberals approaching at 3 o'clock, and libertarians at 9 o'clock, and conservatives at 6 o'clock. They're coming from every angle, every viewpoint. Oh, it's Political Radar with your hosts, Rhonda and Elliot. Hey, all you political junkies, welcome to Political Radar, the best 30 minutes of unscripted and uncensored political talk you will hear all day long. We have Dr. Hector Rodriguez in the studio with us today. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. You have quite a resume. Um, It's going to take me a bit to get through it. So, uh, Well, do we have to read his whole resume? I want to read a little bit about it because he, this man has done everything. Um, You are a retired school principal and a central office administrator. You were an associate associate professor, a school counselor, a teacher, an international banker in the U.S., That's and a um, Mexico City Department of Tourism official. You hold a doctorate in education and business administration. Oh, that's a lot. You're busy. You were a very busy man. Um, yes, I enjoyed a uh, productive life. And so you obviously could speak to a multitude of issues, but I asked you to come in today because we need to talk about a very pressing issue. We have immigration measures that are taking place, some that are proposed, um, things that are happening in this country. And, you know, you're obviously, you are an immigrant from Mexico. I think you have a lot to offer this conversation. I'd love your insights. So tell us about when you immigrated to the U.S. and your experience and and just let's just have you start with that. I'm not sure if immigration is the correct word uh, because, you know, the way I see it, my, my story is, to most people, uh, it is unique, but to many Hispanics, many Mexican nationals, this is just an average. To us, especially the older people like me, uh, I grew up basically in both countries. Since I remember, I've been living in the U.S. and in Mexico, moving back and forth. So both the U.S. and Mexico have been my homes. Uh, I studied here uh, formally since I was 11 years old, and in Mexico formally uh, for my college career. I came back to the States uh, to do graduate work, and as you mentioned, I I hold two master's degrees and a doctorate from three different universities here in the States. But I've been, my first memories in the States are since I was six, seven years of age. So, and uh, I love this country as it, as if it were my second home or my first home, really. Uh, it is like, I don't know, you have a family and you have neighbors, and uh, and some of the, the children from from your neighbors, they come and play to, with your children, and they become your your family as well, your extended family. And your kids and their kids, your neighbor kids, play with your kids. Well, that's how we feel. And, and I remember bringing friends from the U.S. coming to my home in Mexico, and we played, and, and we had a great time, and, and we still have those memories, and, and, and that's having fun forever. So that's who we are. And so your your experience and your um you know your understanding your experience your being in the U.S. has been mostly just very natural. That's a natural development. Right. But of course, I'm and I my, my experience has been I'm, and I, and as you can tell from from what you read, I've been here for a long long time. I mean, uh, most of my adult life has been here. So yes. And so what what is your you know, I want to get your thoughts. So uh, your president, and I, I'm just going to keep saying that, your president, um, he wants to build, and this is a quote, an impenetrable, physical, tall, powerful, beautiful southern border wall. That's a quote from uh-huh. our president. Um, 1,900 miles long. Um, I want to talk about that because that's, it's almost like people joke about it, but I think he's serious. Yeah, I, unfortunately, it is a serious thing that he's doing. But uh, it, sometimes the wall is not just. Uh, you have you have to understand that to some people, this wall, it is not just the physical structure, but rather the symbolic feature 
of what it is, a wall. And, and that's the shame of it. It's a symbol that separates people. It's the symbol that separates country. The symbol that separates ideologies. And that's how people see it. And that's why there's a significant amount of pushback. And, um, and that's the sadness of it all, that uh, when you have those symbols imposed on people, that's when you have the significant amount of pushback. And especially when you say, you know, uh, and, and, and he says it with gusto, gusto, you're going to pay for it, which it really is like... I'm going to do it, and I'm going to bully into you paying for it. And, and it is a bullying technique that it doesn't make sense. It's just like I want to impose something on you, my neighbor, and and it doesn't make sense. It is it's just like uh, is the, the how we do things that, that it, it just makes an, an insult to everybody, not only abroad the international piece, but also inside. Uh, uh, just to give, an, give you an example, when I moved to Green Bay about five years ago, um, I, I, I came and I, and I bought a nice house. I have a nice house uh, in a nice neighborhood here in Green Bay. And, and I have some uh, dogs that they're my, my, like my children, and I want to keep them. I don't believe in, in, in uh, wireless fences, so, so I decided that I was going to put a fence. So the first thing that I did, I talked to my neighbors, mm -hmm. and I and I explained, you know, I want to put a fence, but I want to offend you. So this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do an iron, cast iron fence, and it's a beautiful fence. And and I brought it in the city to take some measurements about where my lot yard was going to be. And I made sure that I carried the company to put the fence on my side of my yard, and I paid for it. Mm -hmm. I paid for it. Because I did not want to offend my neighbors. And my, my neighbors respect me. And we have a beautiful relationship. My, 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 my dogs don't go out on, onto the yard and, and they, they do. So we have a good relationship. And, and that's what it's supposed to be. It's about respect. Well, and according to your president, he says that uh, we've been victimized. That's a quote by Open Borders. What do you think about that comment? Uh, you know... It is a matter of perspective. Um, this, uh, when um, when you create policies on perspective that it is based on faulty information or not sufficient information, that it is just very superficial information, you tend to make wrong decisions. Decision making is based on the right type of information. And when you do not have enough information from different, from different experts, you are going to make the wrong decisions. And this, this is one of many wrong decisions that seems to be a pattern of behavior that the current administration has. It is not just one. It's not, this is not just one issue, the wall or or economic, or NAFTA. It is just many decisions that have been made because there are not enough information. Uh, when you're going to make an information, you have to really look, you have to go in depth, look at the experts and look at the issues from many different perspectives, and have a plan. If you don't do that, you're going to make a mistake. Well, he's also planning to hire, or they want to, uh, 5,000 more Border Patrol agents and 10,000 more immigration officers. That's part of that, of that plan as well. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a hefty price tag it for, is. for a problem that it, it you is. apparently think um, is, you know, we're being victimized. It is. Uh, I'm, you know, I, I don't know who's going to pay for it. It's a lot of money. So I'm pretty sure uh, we're going to pay for it. Yes, we are. I we don't are, think Mexico is going to pay for that. No. Have you heard from anyone? Do you have family there? Do you have any connections there? Yes, um, I do. And, and what, are, what are they thinking? Yes, I do. Actually, what? and that's what, um, yes, I do. And they talk in Mexico, you know, it is, uh, first of all, uh, the effect of what is going on here in the U.S., it's affecting the rest of the world. Uh, uh the, the current president is uh, it's affecting how the world is reacting. And to most people here, 
um, and that's the sad thing. People he, he, people in the States just be, is, we, it seems to me that we live in a bubble and we just hear information about what's happening here. And and what's, what's going on outside the U.S., it's just amazing. Um, Peña Nieto, the president of Mexico, was probably one of the worst presidents that ever happened to Mexico. Why is that? Uh, he he created a lot of problems. He uh, the, he he appeared to have massacred some uh, teachers in the state of Oaxaca. Uh, there's uh, economic turmoil in Mexico. Uh, uh, there are uh, a lot of problems, social problems down there. Uh, despite all of that, his approval rating are through the roof for one reason and one reason only. And it is one person in the U.S. Now, the, the people from Mexico, for the most part, they love the U.S., for the most part, except one person. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, 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 the piñatas that were the, the most common piñata over the Christmas period last year, of course, it was the symbol of this person. Um, that tells you that this person and what he's saying unified the country of Mexico. But this is just on this one issue. What, what you're seeing on immigration, what you're seeing, what you're going to see happening, and what's happening outside through the Muslim world, it's, it's, it's already going to be a rally against symbols of what U.S. represents. Uh, it, it, what I'm hearing from the news right now is that there's a potential that Boeing will lose a $20 billion contract with Iraq because of the, 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 as a response of, of, of the ban on, 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 on Muslims. Uh, the, and can, the, you, can you explain why maybe people aren't aware of that, why that would be a problem? Well, it is a significant problem because, see, when, when the, 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 the president that we have here right now has promised the American people that he's going to generate jobs, but when we have businesses in the U.S. that are losing contracts because of what he's doing, we are losing jobs. We are losing $20 billion worth of jobs. Or we have the potential, okay? And people don't realize that this type of words, that he's, he is responsible for this. And once again, it is because the decisions are not well thought through. I'm not, I'm not saying that we might not need more security. I'm not arguing that. It is not what we do. It's how we do things that makes a significant difference. And that's obvious um, how obvious. he rolled out the, you know, the last executive order that he Absolutely. threw out there and how it rolled and, out and, and what happened with and that. And this is a pattern of behavior that creates problems for everybody. That, that it appears to be that it is just a, a very surface level type of management without any depth. And, and because we, the administration doesn't seem, seem to be listening to the experts. Well, he's very pro, he's not proactive, he's very reactive. And that's not helpful and, to and anybody. That's a problem. A significant so problem. So do you talk to any people that, uh, that talk about all of the fear that people have here over? Absolutely. Yeah, and what do you think about that? You know, people send me stuff. And then I can show you with, in, in, when we finish a, a, a video that was sent to me from a, a Hispanic, a Latino here in, in Green Bay, that, that sent me a video where uh, a supporter from, from this person. Uh, uh, so, so a person that supports the president. Yes. Um, um, he, uh, when he was walking his dog, and in the middle of the night, he decided to vandalize the satellite dish. Uh, <laughs> yes. He vandalized the satellite dish just because he hated the the Hispanic, the Mexican uh, family. Uh, and it's a video, and I, I have it with me. And I, I'll share that with mm-hmm. you. Uh, there is a significant number of people who, who feel uh, threatened 
uh, afraid. Well, uh, he's igniting that fear, and he's actually absolutely. giving just cause. I mean, we, oh, we've yes. seen it happen in Canada recently with um, at a mosque, and we've seen a lot of things happening. That that's yes. that that message you said he sent is it's da- uh, it's dangerous. It is very dangerous, um, and families, um, and of course, you know, I'm I'm a former principal. Uh, I'm an educator, and and what I know is that when you have families who live in fear, it creates psychological scars that they are embedded into their developments, particularly the, particularly the children. They grow with fear, and that generates resentment. Um, um, the, like this family that videotaped this vandalism that occurred to their property, they're afraid to come come up and share this to the police because they're afraid. So they, they send these things to me because they don't know what to do. So what, what, what would you tell them to do? Let's say someone's listening right now. What would uh, you tell them to do? To do the same, to, to, just to talk, to let me know, to share, to, to come out, to, to, to look and... Uh, and but, but I, unfortunately, I have to tell them, yes, uh, just be careful who to, who to share this with, because you're right. Uh, there, there seems to be some resentment with some officers that appear to be one-sided, and, and it's out there. Unfortunately, right now, the community does not trust some of the... The, 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 the community is divided. The perception of the community is divided. I feel that, that some minority groups don't get a fair share of how we are be, being treated. And when you say community, are you ta- you're talking right here? Right here, yeah. Yeah, we are. So what, are, what do you think, I mean, you know, obviously we have con- congressional members that are supposed to be representing us that don't seem to be having any say in any of what's happening. I think it that's is. a huge problem as well. Um, you know, are you encouraging the Hispanic community to reach out to them? Absolutely. I am encouraging everybody to come out and demonstrate and share and, and be vocal. That's that's what makes America great. This is our country is a country of immigrants. We are immigrants and we all come from somewhere. Um that's what makes America unique. We are an asset to this country, to, to, to America. We are value members of our community. Well, we really do owe our lives. It's so ironic, isn't it? We owe our lives yes. to the immigrants that came here. Yes, absolutely. Originally. And what is disheartening is that at some point we do not know if the, the check and balance system is working in, in some parts of our political System. Right now, I'm not completely sure. Well, actually, I know that that the check and balance system is not working in Congress because obviously we have a hyper-partisan Congress. I mean, they're just going to vote for for the party. They're not going to vote for the issues. They're just going to vote for the party regardless. I mean, and that's what's sad that that it, the world can be in flames and, and we're just going to continue going with the party. And that's, that's the sad thing about I wa- it. I want to talk about something. So there's a lot of conversation about the president um, wants to, you know, his whole plan to combat this, this victimization, right, from, from Mexico that he can. And can you just state for the record that you're not a rapist? <laughs> I mean, in criminal. Can you just state that? Because, you know, yeah. you're from Mexico. Can you state that? Can you Absolutely. State that? I can state I that. State that. <laughs> I'll state it, but I want to hear, you know what I, I mean? And I did put that in my bio, to be honest. And you to, know why I'm fair. asking you to state that. I put that in my bio. I am a Mexican national. I am not a rapist. I am not a criminal. I am a highly educational professional, like many thousands of Mexican or from many other nationalities that come to this country. We participate in the economy, and uh, I was asked to stay because of the need of people like me that, 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 that have contributed to the society, to the community, and, and have shared my knowledge and experience to the better of, the, 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 of our Yeah, community. we are definitely a better community because you are here. Uh, I, I want to ask you about this, though. So the president wants to, he, with this plan, he wants to bring you know, law enforcement into the mix state and law officials um, in, in local law officials to to kind of enforce his his measures his rules that he's throwing out there 
how is that okay? So he he wants to take our resources of our you know our law enforcement resources to to deal with this problem that he says we have. When I study when I study a person or a community or an institution, I look for patterns. I look for two things. Number one, patterns of behavior, and the voice that they bring. And one thing that that is striking to me right now. Number one. In the past, I used to hear the topic that, I knew, that, that I'm used to is we're looking for the truth. We're looking for transparency. The voice that I'm here right now coming out of this administration is alternative facts. Mm-hmm. And I heard it very clearly. We have alternative facts. I'm not, we never talked about the truth anymore, but rather alternative facts. And that's what's coming out. And the other piece is that it appears that we're also looking for, uh, we want the newspapers to stay quiet. And they use a different language. I don't use that language, by the way. I don't. By, and this is a personal choice, uh, the, the word that is coming from, from the White House. Uh, but they, they want the newspaper, the news media to stay quiet. Uh, and, and that's significant because um, when... Um, when you have a voice like that, there were nations just want, want to control the media, they want to control the voice, they want to control what what is being said because they want to control how people think. That's what third world nations use to control the people. Now, I'm thankful that the U.S. is an intelligent nation that is not going to allow that to happen. But that's that's what the voice is coming down from this administration. But I think I think part of that is he's trying to validate the fear. Whatever he tries, right? Whatever he tries, it is you cannot control alternative facts. You want to search for the truth, mm-hmm. and that's 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 dangerous, right? You you want to you want to come out and tell this is what happened, and if I made a mistake, I'm going to fix it. And, I, and that's something that I can live with as, as, as any president. You know what? As any administrator, as any, any leader, you know what? I've, I made a mistake, but now this is what I'm going to do to fix it. I can live with that. But if we don't have that. And you would think that problem. people that are supporting him, would, they would want facts. Absolutely. Why don't they demand facts? And that's a problem. We do not seem to have accountability. And that's the question that I have. Where do we have accountability at this point, I don't seem to see it, and that's dangerous. The other piece that I'm looking for, there are two, two things that I'm looking for. One is the voice that's coming out. We have a new type of voice coming down. The second piece is patterns of behavior. And, and as I said earlier, we seem to have decisions that are being made that do not have the depth of understanding or planning. Uh, you know, when I'm, when I'm looking at in, and many promises that have been made. You know, I'm going to give you a plan. I'm going to give you something. I have not seen anything, any death, any plan, any just promises, empty words that tells me I'm going to do something. Just promises, lip service. Well, he absolutely needs to start involving our Congress with his with his plans. I mean, I don't understand and how that's not we, getting more airtime at people all. People need needs to be informed. Everything is happening in secrecy, no transparency. And I, I'm not, I am not used to that. And no, no government, uh, effective government can function like that. Now, as I said, the, the, the good thing that I, that I see happening, or that I know, is that America is, is, is a country of, of very educated people. And, um, and that's the good thing. And so our last our last um, topic I really want to address is so the sanctuary cities situation, mm. especially along the you know the proposed wall on the border. Um, so they've been threatened. The cities that that are a sanctuary city have been threatened that they'll lose their federal funding if they don't comply with what the Trump administration is throwing out there. How, Wh- how which is, is what. Basically, that you know, all of that they need to that they they won't be sanctuary cities. That they'll basically have to comply and they'll have to round up these I, immigrants. And w- what do you think about that issue? You know, I I salute those leaders of those those mayors, those governors 
those I, I I take my hats off to them to that type of leadership that say you know our people are first we'll find the monies and that's good leadership money is secondary to to whatever you, whatever you money give me that's that's not important to so us. they're basically we'll saying manage. we don't we don't care we about don't that care. we're we, just going to do what we need to do our people come first and that's what good leadership is see and that's the difference that I see from from a good leader. That, that that puts the, the value of human beings first. Then then you know whatever you want to give me, that's not important to me, because I'll, I'll find resources somewhere else. But I'm going to take care of our people. Now that's leadership. They 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 make a stand. I'm going to stand up here, and you are not going to move me. But now that on, that on, makes on the same token, though, don't you feel like that's what Trump is trying to say to? half of the U.S. citizens who are afraid. He's like, I want to take care of you, so these are the steps I want to take. Well, yes, it is not the what, it is the how. Mm -hmm. And that is the problem. I, and I agree, as I said, there are some issues that need to be addressed. I ha I'm not disputing that. It is the how we're doing that. Now, what I'm saying is that the, the steps that he's doing right now is putting the same people at risk because we do not live in a bubble. The isolation policies that he's creating is going to create problems abroad. We cannot, the world is not an isolated place now, not, not at this stage in our history. We, we have so many interests abroad. When you have the European economy, the European interest saying, you know what, and it's in, it's in the internet right now, uh, uh, Donald Tusk, I believe, he's calling uh, our our th this this person. He's he's saying he's a threat mm -hmm. to the, the 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 European Union. He's saying that right now. When you have the the Muslim world crying, you know this is this is an enemy enemy too. Now, how long will it take for these groups to target not just American interests but American people? Not very long. Not very long, and that's what that's what not thinking things through creates, and that's a problem. Oh, my, my, so, think so about once the, again, it is the yeah, what. It the executive the what. order that he had recently put out there had people in air in the air flying into the country that could not enter once they landed. They had no idea what happened, and that's what this, this is starting once again. It is not the what; it is the how. That that it, it is creating a lot of problems and and you feel for the people that I mean the, the news that was that the five year old that was detained for four hours in, in and and I mean a five year old that that uh, you, you just don't do that no it's, you don't absolutely and not it, it is and 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 people will remember that let's hope they do <laughs> I don't know I I my my faith in people has been shaken. Pretty Absolutely. much to the core, and um, I I feel like there are people that they don't want to see it. They they aren't willing to look at what's really happening, you know, and and how it's affecting people, how it's affecting how it's affecting human beings, how this really is a, a, a an issue for it is human, a, human and, beings. And that's at least the sad thing that the person who is representing us, because he's the symbol for us. He's, 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 he's the, our face. Is making a statement like that, like that to the world, and this it's it's uh, and and as an American, I I don't know where I I don't know where to draw the line. It is, it is completely an American. It is not who I am. I I'm not like that. I'm not. I don't know about you. I'm not. No. I'm not either. I. I think we should actually have porous borders. We should welcome people here. We should teach them English. Absolutely. Uh, in we should teach them English, Chinese, Spanish, <laughs> right. German. We need to be a. We need to be a sophisticated country. Yeah. A a a, a country that opens minds. That's who we need to be. We cannot be. Uh, ethnocentric me 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 only we need to be able to to really be uh, a, a citizen of the world really open-minded and and strive 
for 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 being a, 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 a society that it is aware of everything to better to, to have somebody that can be function everywhere in the world and that's what our children need to be and that is absolutely not what the president is putting out there it's completely opposite of what you but, just said you know but but you know and I'm trying to be open minded to the other half of the country that you know that supports this sort of policy and they are they're just paralyzed by fear and they want him to do something to keep you, bad people out you you use you use the word here a word that appears to be driving the whole thing yeah fear you tell me explain what fear is to me uh well i don't have that fear so, but, okay. uh, no, but, but you but you used it <laughs> yes you yes, used it yes what is fear so uh Boy, that's that's tough philosophy. I'm going to tell you what <laughs> yeah. is fear. Uh, so I think that it's this, uh, it's just this this emotion, this e- emotional response. That's uh, most fear? of the time. Yeah, I think most of the time it's fear uh, is ignorance. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. I guess that's what I'm saying. Fear, <laughs> fear, in, in, and the only way you combat fear is through the light, through knowing, through learning. That's the only, there's no other way. So we need to teach them. We need to educate them. We need to give them something that is solid. And what we're giving them is more fear. And that is wrong. Agreed. Oh, that's a great way to wrap up this episode. Hec- uh, Dr. Hector Rodriguez, a um, lot of insight and words that I well, think we needed to hear. Um, Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. So and uh, if if uh, anybody'd like to get in touch with you online for more information, how would they do that? Um, I guess through you guys or. Uh, do you have any contacts you'd like to share if people want to get in touch with you? You mentioned a blog. Where's the blog? Mm-hmm. Through here, I, I I don't have. I have an email. Uh, okay. Uh, it's, uh, it's number six degrees. Limited at gmail dot com and Excellent. and and this like six is the number of degrees that m- my wife and I have uh, uh, six degrees limited at gmail dot com. Okay, and we'll include that in the show notes so people okay. can get in touch with you if they'd like to talk to you at all. Okay, thank you and yeah, have a good day. All right, that wraps up episode number sixty one. Jacob told me I have to have uh, episode numbers at the end again, so there you go, Jacob. Hope you're happy with me. Politicalradar.com slash 61 is where you go for show notes. And please subscribe on YouTube. Please join the Political Radar community on Facebook and get involved and say what you think about this issue and and how we can fix it. Uh, You can find me on Facebook, on Twitter. You can heckle me. You can tell me your thoughts. If you'd like to be a guest, let us know. And uh, anything else to add to that, Rhonda? No, it was a great episode. Great conversation. Thanks again. You can get in touch with me on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Political Radar. To ensure that you never miss an episode, subscribe on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. To stay up to date, visit politicalradar.com or connect with us on Facebook or Twitter. 